Well, um, Greg, thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate the, um, taking the time to talk to us. Um, let's uh, dive right in and talk about um, the night before the election, um, the incident all over the news. Uh, you know, what happened? What, what happened between you and Mr. Jacobs? Why did it happen? Well, I, I'm not proud of what happened. I, I made a mistake, and uh, I think when you make a mistake, you need to own up for it. And that's what I did. That's why I apologize to uh, Mr. Ben Jacobs and, honestly, to the Fox team and all of Montana. That's, uh, that's not who I am, and it's not the way I'm going to, to be a spokesperson for this state. Um, any explanation as to kind of what, what did happen? I mean, um, besides what we've seen in the, in the press so far? Well, I, uh, it, it, uh, it wasn't right the way I treated him. And uh, uh, for that, I, I take responsibility. And that's what I communicate. That's why I apologize yeah. on election okay. night. Um, now, your campaign put out a statement that kind of blamed the reporter um, for the incident. And the Fox News reporter, of course, said that account is not true. Um, do you stand by that campaign statement or, or not? Well, I think it's important as we look at this that uh, I take responsibility for my actions. And that's why I apologize to Ben Jacobs. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm sorry for yeah. what I did. And but what about the statement uh, that the campaign put out? That's is that. I mean, is it fair to say that that was not accurate? Um, you know, I the uh, I don't think it, right now analyzing the the facts is is I need to focus on taking responsibility for my actions, and and that's what I've done. Okay. Um, now I've seen and heard commentary from conservatives um, Mon and Montana voters kind of defending. Um, I think it's the way we repair relationships and move forward. Okay. Um, now, on the other side of the political spectrum, we have people saying that this incident should be linked to President Trump, um, that he's encouraged animosity toward the press, um, called some members of the press enemies of the American people, uh, um, that he's to blame for creating this uh, climate of animosity. Uh, do you think that's accurate at all? What, what do you think of that, that line of thought that we've heard from many? Well, um, I'd like to see, for my part, I'd like to see a, a return to more civility on, on, on both sides, honestly. And uh, um, I think it's important. The role of the press is extremely important. And, and as a public official, I need to make myself uh, open and available to sit down and address the issues that come up. Okay. Um, one last question about this, this particular thing. Um, are, are you worried or concerned that this incident is going to define you as a congressman, as a politician going forward, and, and make it hard for you to be, to be effective? And how will you overcome that? Well, I, I was really pleased to prevail the way I did in the election. Um, and it, even with what went on, uh, I received over 50% of the vote of the people of Montana. And I take that responsibility very seriously. And it's humbling, honestly, that I'll be the voice for Montana. And uh, as I said at the beginning, the, that, that is not who I am. Uh, it's not going to define my leadership for the state. And I look forward to working, working going forward to represent all of Montana. Now, you'll be sworn into office in about, um, about three weeks or so. Uh, what, what's your priority to get ready for the job at this point? Yeah, well, it's extremely important. First, uh, again, I, I want to thank the people of Montana for their confidence in me. Uh, I've been taking calls from supporters. I've been working on putting staff together uh, and also reaching out to various constituent groups, whether it's people in our ag community or business community and uh, other groups to understand what their priorities are because my job has got to be a strong voice for all of them. I want to go to Washington with uh, a clear set of objectives that are not my objectives but those of the people of Montana. It, have you decided which committees you'd like to request at this point? Well, it, committees are really an intersection of my skills and Montana's interests. I would love to have an opportunity to serve on natural resources uh, or uh, armed services or veterans affairs. Mm -hmm. I think I could also help on small business, but uh, I am coming in midterm. Uh, most of the committee slots 
are filled. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to, as a, when I spoke with the speaker, I told him I would serve where I'm needed and uh, I would contribute uh, where I can. Now, when you get to D.C., or maybe before you get to D.C., and, and you map out a strategy of what you want to accomplish, uh, what's going to be at the top of your list in, in terms of the things you like to do for the state? Well, they're going to be exactly what I laid out during the campaign. Number one, we're going to drain the swamp. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we bring accountability back to Washington. Uh, we need term limits. We need to hold, we need to balance the budget, or congressmen shouldn't get paid, congressmen and women. And we should make it illegal for congressmen to become lobbyists. I'll introduce legislation around those lines. I think we need to have the discussion because people are sick and tired of Washington working for Washington and not working for Montana. And then secondly, I need to represent all of Montana. And uh, I'm particularly looking for some early wins. Many times I've advocated for three to five yard plays as opposed to right. Hail Mary passes. Yeah. So I'm making that request right now. I'm going out to uh, associations and groups across the state saying, give me your three to five yard plays that would make it easier for people to prosper here in Montana and protect our precious way of life. And that's where I'll start. Those first things you mentioned, are, are those kind of um, Hail Mary plays asking to uh, um, you know, balance the budget, not get paid if you balance the budget, and also to bar people from becoming lobbyists and term limits? Those kind of strike me as being uh, uh, perhaps Hail Mary plays. Well, you have to point the finger where, where you think the problem is. And I think it's important we get that legislation introduced so that People can vote up or down on whether they think it's a good idea. I think that will help improve accountability in Washington. Let's talk a little bit about health care. Um, you've stated your goals uh, for the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, of course, mm -hmm. lowering premiums, uh, rural access to health care being preserved, and also protecting people with pre-existing conditions. You've also said you don't think the House bill does that right now. So how do you fix it? What, what, what are the changes you think need to be made and uh, what are the uh, elements of repeal you think are going to be helpful? Well, there are some missing pieces in the bill. And, and, and the CBO data has come out now, and it's clearly said it would not reduce premiums. And we got into this mess in the first place because we passed a bill and said we need to pass it to figure out what's in it. And, and I just don't think that's good policy. As an engineer, I like to analyze, collect data. Mm -hmm. um, the current legislation doesn't do anything about prescription drug costs. It doesn't any, do anything about increasing options for people in their choice of health care. Uh, and we've got to deal with some of these issues in order to get costs down, uh, preserve rural access, and protect people with pre-existing conditions. You mentioned choice. I, mean, I think one of the things the bill does is it gives states the ability, um, and it's in discussion in the Senate too, it gives states the ability to say, uh, you don't have to buy all of these, this coverage. You can get waivers for certain things. Is that something you think is possibly a good idea for Montana? I generally think more local control is better government. Um, there are some uh, concerns because there was a discussion about whether or not that would actually protect people with pre-existing conditions. And I've been very clear, that's a litmus test for me. We've got to protect people with pre -ex We need to provide a path for uh, people with pre-existing conditions. Uh, but better decisions are made locally. Uh, you've also said you don't want to pull out the rug from the, the new Medicaid people who are covered. Now 77,000 Montanans. Mm -hmm. But every GOP discussion I've heard or proposal I've seen does that in a form, you know, capping the money or by various ways. Um, is there a path forward here that doesn't, that you think could be acceptable? I, I think there is. Uh, I, I look forward to being part of that discussion. Uh, this is what I've done my whole life. I've solved complex problems. That's what engineers do. Uh, we have the added advantage that we can actually do math as well. Uh, and that's a missing skill in Washington. So uh, I look forward to put my shoulder to the plow and help and work on health care. Speaking of science and math, um, do you agree with the president's decision yesterday to pull out of the Paris Climate Accords? I do. Uh, I believe that uh, we need to protect Montana jobs. Uh, this is very similar to what the Clean Power Plan did to coal here in Montana. And, of course, we need to protect the environment. But this was a bad deal for America because it put regulations ahead of jobs and livelihoods for really negligible impact on the environment. Um, so I, I would oppose any legislation uh, that would steal Montana jobs and livelihoods. So how does pulling out of the Accords help uh, Montana jobs and our economy in the state? Well, it's additional regulations are a burden on all businesses, uh, and uh, this, this eliminates jobs. Any particular jobs you have in mind when you say that? I mean, Well, it, this would be... Uh, jobs that are 
have emissions associated with it. Uh, if we coal, add regulations, instance, coal, oil, fossil fuel, fossil very fuels. important industries for the state of Montana. Yeah, big industries, yes. If we constrain these industries and give advantage to other company, countries, we're going to have less jobs here. Um, now, in your um, victory speech last week, you said you'll be standing up for coal miners and uh, timber workers, agriculture, veterans, and I believe you said the folks who are left behind. Uh, that's a lot of people, uh, and that's a lot of things. What, what, how will you do that? What, what are some things that are going to um, help those people you identified in, well, in Montana? Yeah, well, it's, that's the job. I need to be the spokesperson and the voice for all of Montana. Uh, and you start by reaching out to those individual groups. I mean, the best way we can help people that have been left behind that don't have good jobs is with a stronger economy. Um, you take timber, for example. We need to work on uh, reform of the Equal Access to Justice Act so that we can actually start managing our forests again and not be tied up with frivolous lawsuits. Uh, for coal miners, you know, coal is going to have to compete economically with other sources of fuel. But energy is a national defense issue as, as much as it is an economic issue. Um, we can do more there. Uh, and for those people left behind, we need to make sure that we get um, uh, opportunities to people so that they can succeed and prosper here in Montana. And this is what I've done my whole life. I've, I've spent it creating jobs here in Montana. Uh, I'm a, I'm, I was a small business guy. Our business became a big business. And I look forward to using those uh, skills back in Washington uh, to remove the barriers so that small business and large business can prosper. And you've also said, of course, that you want to cut the budget and talked about how, how important that is. And so does President Trump. We've seen his proposed budget, but it cuts a lot of things that benefit rural areas, such as you know, crop subsidies, mm -hmm. um, food stamps, um, low-income heating assistance, job training, rural economic development, rural housing subsidies, Amtrak, uh, the Rural Utility Service. You know, I, I could probably go on. Um, are you going to be fighting those types of cuts or not? Well, it depends on which particular one. I will always be on Montana's side. We do, I don't think anyone would disagree we need to bring some fiscal discipline back to Washington. I've spent my whole life balancing budgets, and it's a complex issue of balancing issues. Um, you know, I've also been married 29 years, and I know two people don't agree on everything. If there's ever a discrepancy between Montana's interests and that of the administration, I'll always be on Montana's side. Uh, so many of those things, I believe, should stay in the budget. Uh, we, need to, uh, we need to continue to do that, but we do need to bring fiscal discipline back to Washington. I do think that we're not going to balance the budget by cutting our way there, though. Um, the way we balance the budget is by having a reasonable spending plan and then helping small and large business grow so that we have more tax revenue and we can grow our way out of this deficit situation. Um, but has that worked in the past? I mean, I've heard you say that before, and I've heard a lot of... Uh, uh, people who um, have an economic, economic view like yours say that if we cut taxes and do certain things, we're, we're going to grow the uh, economy and get rid of these budget deficits. Now, that hasn't worked in the past. Why is it going to work now? Well, we haven't had fiscal discipline, so you can't do one without the other. Uh, I think if we let people keep more of their hard-earned money, uh, they'll know how to spend it, and we'll have a stronger economy, and tax revenues go up. But we ha in concert with that, we've also, also got to have uh, the discipline to have spending discipline, discipline and not grow government spending as fast as it's been growing. And that, honestly, both parties have been guilty of that. I, hopefully we can, we can do a better job. Um, I also had a brief question about uh, national monuments, which are being reviewed, and I, I don't know where that's going to go, um, but I'm wondering what you think about the national mon monument here in Montana, the Missouri River Breaks Monument, if you think that needs to be reviewed or if you're satisfied with it being the way it is now. Well, it's under review. Um, the President Trump has called it yes. a review. Uh, and uh, I think the missing piece in its designation, as I understand it, talking to the folks up there on the High Line, is that the people there never had their voice heard. Uh, and I think these designations of monuments are there for good purpose, but they can't be done at the 11th hour, at the end of administration, without input from the local communities. So uh, the process I'd like to see is the folks in that area have a chance to voice their opinion and then a decision be made if it should be continued or not. Hmm. Um, so, so you're open to hearing what's said by people in Montana about that designation and, and perhaps adjusting it. If, Correct. If, that's the, yeah. if, if it's supported. Uh, now, as a CEO of an international company, uh, I'm assuming you worked on an executive team that you saw a problem, you identified a solution, and you told people to, to carry it out. Um, 
Now you're a congressman, which is going to be a lot different. You're one of 435. You're a low man on the totem pole. Um, how are you going to be successful in this new environment? Well, uh, I, I would say what I learned from my years of leadership is uh, you're not leading if nobody's following. Uh, so <laughs> it's critically important to get a, an executive leadership team to come with you. Uh, you, you. You need to, in many times, let them get the... Uh, recognition for the achievement, uh, even better if the ideas are theirs. Uh, maybe you plant the seat, you encourage them. Uh, you, uh, it's really very much a, a model of servant leadership. That's mm -hmm. the way I always ran our businesses. And I'll bring all the skills I've acquired in negotiating thousands and probably tens of thousands of contracts and leading an executive leadership team. I'll use those skills uh, to the extent I can uh, to be a strong voice for Montana and influence other members and the administration to get what's right for our country and our state. Anything else in terms of the job or issues that we haven't talked about that you think is important to mention? Well, I, I just want to say that this is the first time at, at post-election night to speak with the people of Montana, and I just want to say I am honored, and I, I want to be a voice for all of Montana. My door is open, and I look forward to hearing from you. When does the campaign for 2018 start? Um, well, it's sort of always on, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not. It's, in this job, yeah, it, every two years. That's the yeah. job of being a spokesperson for the people. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think the best way to campaign uh, is to do my job and show results for the people of Montana, and that's my intention.